Oh? <laughs> and what have we here? Don't be frightened. Now. I was under the impression that you'd called for me. No use in denying it. You of the Earth seem to believe that I'm too preoccupied with my godly duties to hear your prayers. But you underestimate me. I hear every question, every laugh, every sigh, every cry for help, and every outpour of gratitude. It's only that I don't always provide a response. Why would I choose to answer you, then? <laughs> ah. You claim to believe in gods, but insist on analyzing our actions through your own limited lenses. <laughs> How foolish, dearest. You may be an insignificant being in your own eyes, but trust that in mine, you are anything but. Hmm. There you go again. Applying your mortal viewpoint to everything. Though, I'll admit, <laughs> it's rather endearing. You ask why I've never come to you before, but I have always come when you most needed me. The time you fell into a river and almost drowned? I was the current that bore you to shore. The dragon that attacked your home? I was the arrow that pierced true when you shot it at the beast. The fever that almost took your life last winter? I was the traveling apothecary who stopped by to treat you. Whenever you need something, it's rarely truly out of reach. Have you never stopped to consider that? Of course, you may have your suspicions, but <laughs> you have a cunning mind, dearest. For all I make fun of you so. Think about it. What have your priests always preached to you? What does your church teach you about me? They say that I am the god of a distant past. The one who abandoned your people as punishment for their sins. All that is true. But not in the way they think. Your kingdom is corrupt and immoral. It has lost itself so much power and wealth. And it has also lost all the small virtues that I value in humans. Your capacity for kindness. Your appreciation for humble pleasures. Your potential for growth. I do not visit this place unless it is for one of the few people who still possess these traits. The few I still care for and wish to protect. I do not linger within these accursed walls. I provide assistance, and then I leave. That has always been my way. But I heard you call to me just now. The church's desperation knows no bounds, it seems. Now they have chosen an innocent to sacrifice in the hope that this will win my favor. How trite! Did they really think that your blood would cleanse them of their sins? Hush! Don't be frightened, my dearest. My anger is towards them, not you. Hush. Now, let me hold you. Let me comfort you. You have no clue how I watch over you. And the church intended to kill you in my name. Yet, you still called to me in your hour of need. <laughs> Funny little thing. Hmm? 
Now you want to know why I care for you in the first place? <laughs> Full of questions today, aren't we? Even in the face of death. <laughs> Let's put that curious mind of yours to use. I was the current in the water. The arrow in your quiver. The healer at your bedside. The hundreds of little coincidences that had guarded you from harm. Whatever form have I taken? Whatever masks have I worn? Can you guess? <laughs> Don't think so hard, dearest. You'll put a permanent furrow in that pretty brow of yours. And there's no need for that. Think of a spring day some years ago. When you went to pray for warmer weather to end the famine. You went right up to the steps of the church, hoping your prayers would be better heard within its walls. And what did you find there? Ah, yes. I see you're beginning to remember. You found a boy. A boy pale and gaunt from starvation. His clothes rags, his face stained with blood and dirt. He was lying at the great iron doors of the church. And a priest was beating him for defiling the holy grounds of his filthy mortal blood. You pleaded with that priest. You held onto his robes and begged him to show mercy. The boy might as well have been dead at that point. But you still fought for his life. You took him home and treated his wounds. Fed him what little food you had to spare. But, the next morning, you found he was gone. Or, well... You see now that he wasn't quite gone. He stands before you right now. I was the current, the arrow, the healer, and I was the life you chose to save. I'll admit, that fiasco with the priest was a test on my part, a little experiment to see whether human kindness still exists in this corner of the world. A touch manipulative, perhaps, but... You'll have to forgive me. It comes of being a deity. I wasn't expecting anyone to go to the lengths that you did. Do you understand a little better now, dearest? You came to me in my hour of need. I offer guidance and protection to all who have earned it. But you have always been special in this regard. I have moved the course of fate itself for you more times than I can count. And I treasure you more deeply than you will ever know. And I regret none of it. Hush. You never needed to earn anything of mine. I gave myself to you freely. You are the only being in this world whom I offer my power to unconditionally. Running out of time, you say? <laughs> Dearest, you're under the protection of a god. Time will never run out as long as you are with me. But I suppose we may leave now. If that creature who calls himself a priest arrives and find me here, he'll throw a fit, and, uh, I may be forced to take some... Extreme measures. No need to look so alarmed. There is no punishment that I could give that they wouldn't deserve. But that is for another time. For now. Are you willing to come away with me? Will you let me? take you away? <laughs> A wise answer. Come. Let us leave this place.